All right, today we're going to talk about the difference between a hypothesis, a theory, and a law. A lot of students, when they walk in my classroom, they have a common misconception of what the relationship is between a hypothesis, theory, and a law. A lot of them see these things as a sequence of steps. They tell me, well, a hypothesis, it gets tested once, and then it becomes a theory, and then if the theory turns out to be true, it'll become a law. That is not how it happens. Theories do not become laws. It's not a sequence of steps. All right, step one, you don't make a hypothesis and you continue testing it, it becomes a theory. Now, for that part, that's pretty accurate. It's from step two to step three that everybody has the misconception. And then if the theory works and more testing confirms it, it becomes a law. It's not a sequence of steps. That's not how it works at all. All right, many people often misuse these words, hypothesis, theory, and law. They're often misused. The media misuses the words. Everyday people in school and even some science teachers misuse the words and people who think they know what they're talking about, but they actually have no idea what they're talking about. And the most common misused word is the word theory. Here's the media using the word theory incorrectly, the aquatic ape theory. Here's somebody else who's misusing the word theory. I have a theory about the human mind. A brain is a lot like a computer. It will only take so many facts and then it will go on overload and blow up. That's actually not even a theory. What they're making is an educated guess, but that's not even considered a hypothesis. And here's why. All right, a lot of people say I have a theory. No, no, you don't. What you have is a hypothesis, but an untested one at that. A hypothesis is simply an educated guess. Everybody gets that right. What they get wrong is this part. It has to be testable. You can't just make an educated guess and call it a hypothesis. It needs to be testable. Science only deals with the natural world. It doesn't deal with anything that's supernatural or anything that cannot be tested. Hypotheses, which is plural for hypothesis, they're written as an if-then statement. If X, ha if X is met, then Y will happen. Here's a simple example. If you study 10 hours for the upcoming test, then you will earn a perfect score. That is a simple hypothesis. It can be tested because if I study 10 hours for the upcoming test, I'm either going to make a perfect score or not make a perfect score. There's only going to be one or two outcomes. Now, if I do make a perfect score, that doesn't mean that it automatically becomes a theory. We're going to have to test, 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 test to see if we can develop an explanation for why I'm getting a perfect score. So let's talk about laws. Now, observations made can be considered laws if it continues to happen the same way every time. A great example is the law of gravity, and there's several laws we can do, but the law of gravity is one that everybody's pretty familiar with. If you throw something out the window, it's going to fall to the ground. doesn't matter what you throw. Now, we're excluding flying items here, obviously, but it doesn't matter what you throw out the window. Gravity will pull it towards the center of the Earth. Theories explain why things happen. All right, they explain the observation and or laws made. So theories have undergone continued testing to make sure they are valid and reliable. Just a few seconds ago, we were talking about the law of gravity. The theory of gravity explains why those things will fall. The law of gravity is you observing things falling. The theory of gravity says why it's going to fall. It explains why things fall to the ground. That's what theories are, they're explanations. A great way to remember this is simply this short statement. Theories are explanations for the observations or laws made. And we have a whole list of theories that we're going to talk about uh, right now. So the first one is the heliocentric theory. A lot of people say, oh, it's just a theory, or I don't believe in theories. Ask them if we orbit around the sun. They will say, well, of course we do, only a you know, complete, you know, crazy person would say we don't orbit around the sun. Of course we do. That is the heliocentric theory. Then you can talk about cell theory. Those little small items that make up our body, those cells, that is called cell theory. Then we also have the theory of gravity, a great one. If you ask them, if I throw something out the window, what will happen? They'll say it will fall. It will fall every time. We know why it will fall because gravity exists. Then we have atomic theory. The smallest units of matter are atoms. We know that. Ask them if you mind if coughing in their face. Of course they'll get upset and say, no, I don't want you coughing in my face. Ask them, what about germs? You believe in germs, right? They'll say, of course I do. It causes people to get sick. That is called germ theory. Germ theory explains why people get sick. We have the oxygen theory of combustion. This is why fires and explosions happen. 
All right, if you enclose a lit match, like if you put a you know glass over it or you enclose it, it's going to cut off the oxygen supply. Because there's no oxygen, the match is going to go out. The fire in the match is going to go out. You have the plate tectonics theory, continental drift, explaining why and how the continents are drifting apart. And then one that you can close with is the theory of evolution. A lot of people don't believe, you know, don't understand that. I don't want to say believe because the great thing about science is it's true whether you believe in it or not. A lot of people, you know, don't understand what evolution is. But anytime someone says, I have a theory, please do the world a favor and correct them and let them know what theories are. Next time you hear someone say, I don't believe in a theory, go ahead and pull some examples from this list to educate them. If you, if you have any questions, you can always post in the comment section below. If you need help with a certain topic, post it in the comment section below.